they uh, some summary will be uh, shared by good evening everyone the area of study was the second sermon of st peter from verses 11 to 26 of chapter 3 of acts yesterday by this time the church had grown up exponentially from a mere group of 120 members to thousands and thousands of people who were joining to the church on a daily basis where the first sermon was from the front yard of a house the power of holy spirit had transformed them to be able to deliver the next sermon in the temple of jerusalem itself here peter was trying to do the same thing as on the earlier occasion he was trying to point his listeners to jesus as the savior of the world he also confronted them with their sin appealed for their repentance and gave reasons to repent and believe he talked about jesus about people and about repentance firstly about jesus his holiness and power of healing which was in the verse 16 the crippled man became strong and healed by his faith in jesus and and his suffering is the fulfillment of all the prophecies about him that was verses 18 and he is the messiah the anointed one verses 20 and 21 this is from actually from the prophecies deuteronomy 8 chapter 18 verses 15 and genesis chapter 12 verse 3 and about jesus resurrection for which they are the they are the witnesses it's him themselves which is on the verses 15 now about the people Basically, there were a set of accusations and convictions, starting from verses 13 to 15. Peter says, "You denied Jesus in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go." Verses 13. Verse 14 says, "You rejected the holy and righteous one in favor of an unholy, unjust murderer." Verses verse 15 says, "You killed the Prince of Life." but in the verse 17 it's it's a consolation or it can be said that okay it's a mitigation of their sin in some degree by the suggestion of their ignorance or the ignorance of their rulers and in the same sentence same breath he addresses them as brethren now the last part would be the appeal of hope and salvation verse 19 verse 19 actually preach, peter preaches about the repentance there can be no salvation apart from repentance from one sin he tells the jews here that they are to repent and return to lord for they are the willful prodigal children who have rejected their god now we discussed about the similarities between the first sermon and uh, second sermon wherein uh, one of the factors is jesus crucifixion and resurrection were actually discussed in both the sermon and the responsibility of jesus death is laid on the jews third one is actually the fulfillment of all the prophecies about jesus life and uh, his crucifixion and resurrection and the another similarity is the repentance and forgiveness of his sins in Christ and uh, the words the 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 meditation, the meditation uh, word was uh, the words 19 repent then and turn to god so that your sins may be wiped out that times of refreshing may come from the lord I hope that was pretty much of it. Thank you. Thank you, Rani. You did a good job. God bless you. Uh, today, we are now getting into chapter four. And 
we see that uh, in up to chapter three, we uh, what was summarized today. Yeah, so this is the outline of chapter four. Uh, as I mentioned to you, that I have divided the chapter four into four sections. The first section uh, is titled Trouble Begins, chapter four, verses one to seven. The second section is Peter's third sermon, chapter four, verses eight to 12. The third section is Witness of the Disciples, chapter four, verses 13 to 22. And the fourth section is Witness of the Early Church, chapter 4, verses 23 to 37. Now, we are going into chapter 4 now. And the first section is The Trouble Begins, chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. Now, till now, we saw that the disciples were preaching, they were gathering. There was no organized trouble or opposition that they faced. The first Thing that we see in this uh, uh, is that point A is first opposition and arrest. This is the first opposition that the disciples or the church is facing after the resurrection of Jesus or after the church is born. This is the first opposition or arrest. Now, in, uh, in those days, there were two laws, the Jewish law and the Roman law. <clears throat> Roman law, Romans expected the Jews to solve their internal problems using their system, their legal system, but the Jews could not award capital punishment. If you see, Jesus was first tried by the Jewish court, which is called the uh, Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin is called the Jewish court. I'll be coming to that a little later. <clears throat> we know that Jew Jesus was first tried by the Sanhedrin and then taken to Pilate because only the Romans could declare or award capital punishment. So here now, the first opposition and arrest is made by the Jewish system uh, or the Jewish law system or the Jewish rule. The second point that I'd like uh, you to notice, what is the issue? There are two issues on which accusation is made against the disciples. The first issue is in Verse 2. Verse 2 says, They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people, proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. I will tell you in a while why this became a point of debate or issue. Why the leaders, Jew Jewish leaders, were disturbed by the preaching of the apostles and particularly to saying, that Jesus has risen from the dead and we are witnesses. So this was, right now, let us accept this or let us think of this as one of the accusations. Now, the second accusation is found in verse 7. In verse 7 reads, They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. And the questioning was, By what power or what name did you do this? Now, what are they referring to? They are referring to the healing of the lame man. They want to know by what power or what name did you heal the lame man. So these are the two accusations. These are the two issues which by on which they were arrested. The first is uh, they, they were disturbed by the messages of Peter preaching about the resurrection of Jesus. And second, they want to know by what power or what name did you do this? Did you heal the man? Now, then we come to the third point that we see here is, in, in spite of all this, all the opposition, all the trouble, all the struggles, we read in verse 4, but many who heard the message believed. So the number of men who believed grew up about 5,000. So Reni was just saying that, there was an exponential growth in the church and it is continuing to grow exponentially that the numbers are increasing and it says it grew to about 5,000 men alone. So you can imagine how the church is growing, multiplying at that point. So now having seen these three points, first uh, we understand after the church is born, this is the first organized opposition or arrest of the disciples or of the believers. Second, 
we know that uh, we looked into what the actual issue was. There were two issues that came up. First is they were disturbed by the apostle proclaiming that Jesus is risen. Second, they want to know by what power and what name, how did you heal this lame man? And we also saw that the church grew and there's an exponential growth. Now, I want to also uh, uh, info, uh, tell you about the people that are mentioned in this passage. In verses, from verses 1 to 7, you can find about 10 groups of people or 10 groups and names of people mentioned in these verses. And so many times these words are repeated when we read the Bible. And sometimes we don't understand what they mean. The first word is, you find it in verse 1 itself, priests are mentioned. Now, if you read verse 1, it says, uh, the priest and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. So that is verse 1. In verse 1, it, is, it mentions about priests. Who are the priests in uh, when we read in the Bible, uh, especially in the New Testament? Who are the priests? We should understand that priests are Levites who were largely from the family of Aaron because Aaron was anointed as the first priest and it was through Aaron that the priestly family came. God made a covenant with Aaron, but it was not only Aaron's uh, family that became priests. There were other from other families that became priests, but they were all Levites. They were set apart to do priestly duties. So what we need to know is priests were Levites, but you also need to know that not all Levites were priests, but all priests were Levites. Don't get confused. Read that sentence carefully. Not all Levites were priests, but all priests were Levites. And I'll give you an example. If you read the parable of the Good Samaritan, a very familiar parable that Jesus said, which we find in Luke chapter 10, verses 30 to 37, it says when the man, the, when the man who was injured was on the roadside, first a priest came and then a Levite came. Now, how do you understand a priest and a Levite? When we say all Levites are pre, uh, all priests are Levites, but all Levites are not priests. So, how do we understand that? Is among the Levites, there were a certain group of people, certain number of people that were set apart to become priests. So, the priest can be. Uh, a Levite can be a priest, but all Levites need not be priests. So, and all priests were Sadducees. They were considered as from the as Sadducees. We'll come to that a little later. And in verse one, the next uh, group of people or the next person that we see is the temp captain of the temple guard. In verse one itself, we read about the captain of the temple guard. Who is the captain of the temple guard? Or what, what is his role? He was the chief of the temple security, maintain, maintaining law and order in the temple and in the premises of the temple. So we know that it has become a law and order situation that a group of people are standing and preaching. The problem with the leaders of the temple is because it was in that place that Jesus was condemned and sentenced and they, they accused Jesus there and they wanted Jesus killed. Now these disciples, right in the temple, they stand and preach about Jesus. So it is a contradiction for the Jewish leaders. And so they are against this preaching. So it has become a kind of a law and order problem. And the temple guards, captain of the temple, temple guard was a very influential person and a very powerful per person in, in the Jewish system. Next, we come to another important group which we so common, uh, commonly read in the Bible are the Sadducees. Again, in verse 1, it mentions about the Sadducees. Who are the Sadducees? The Sadducees were the chief priest and the high priest and generally the priestly clan were all from the Sadducees. They were all associated to the Sadducees. Now, we read about Pharisees, but no Pharisee could become a priest. It was only the Sadducees who could become priests. There were wealthy and aristocrats. They were considered to be the high-class people of the society. They were highly influential. 
And so they were not popular with the common people. And another thing about the Sadducees is, they only considered the first five books, what we call the Torah, as scripture. They never gave importance to always the Bible talks about, in, about the Old Testament. It talks about the law and the prophets. But they never took the prophets seriously. They were only concerned about what is written in the first five books of the Bible. Or, uh, first five books, that is what we call the Torah. Now, another very important thing, which is, which is a matter of concern for us as we study is that they did not believe in resurrection. They never could accept that a person could die and rise up. They didn't believe in bodily resurrection, even of people who are dead and gone. They would say that they are dead and gone. They will never ever, ever rise again. So, and we see Paul addressing this issue in some of the letters, particularly the letters to the Thessalonians. He addresses them about how the Sadducees don't believe in resurrection. Now, so this is it. Now you should co connect why they were disturbed by the preaching of the apostles. So the Sadducees, we know that they are the influential people. They are the chief priests. Now they have come along with the others, with the other temple authorities to Peter and John to question them because they are disturbed by their preaching that Jesus is risen from the dead. When they don't believe in resurrection, they have to oppose it. So, and another point of information for if you are interested is that it may be that they are descendants of Zadok the priest who anointed uh, Solomon as king. So from the name Zadok comes Z Sadducees is one of the propositions. It is not a proven fact. Now, the next group of people that we see in, uh, in, in, in verse 5 are the rulers. Who are the rulers? So the rulers, as I mentioned, uh, the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin is like the Supreme Court. They It consists of 70 plus 1, that is the chief priest. And this 70 is a makeup of 24 priests. As I told you, all priests are Sadducees. So 20, there will be 24 Sadducees, 24 elders, which is assumed to be two from each of the tribes of Israel. So 12 tribes, two representatives. So uh, they become the 24 elders. And then 22 scribes. We will come down to who the scribes are. So this was the makeup of the Sanhedrin. And Sanhedrin, you should know, is the, like, the Supreme Court for us. And it has 70 plus one people, one person, that is the chief priest. Then we have, next we have the... Um, Elders, I told you about the elders. They are the representatives of the tribes. And then we have the scribes. It is mentioned in verse 5, there were scribes. Who are the scribes? Scribes are the teachers of the law. They are the ones who would interpret the law, who would teach the law. The priests and the Sadducees were only connected to the priestly duties. But teaching of the law was the duty of the scribes. And it is believed that the scribes wrote copies of the law and the prophets. Then we have another person mentioned in verse 6, that is Annas. Annas was the chief priest and he was a Sadducee. Now, and then we have uh, the mention of the name Caiaphas. Caiaphas is also a chief priest. He's a Sadducee and he happens to be the son-in-law of Annas. So, and then we have the last two names mentioned in uh, chapter 6, uh, sorry, verse 6 is John and Alexander. These, the, these are the group, uh, group of people that went to arrest uh, Peter and John. So, John and Alexander, they, we really don't know much about them, but we, we understand they are very influential people. So friends, I don't know if you were able to get all the notes right. Uh, let me quickly go through what I said. Uh, priest, they were uh, Levites, largely from the tribe of Aaron. And they were set apart to do only priestly duties. Not all Levites were priests, but all priests were Levites. Uh, then we saw about the temple guard, the chief uh, of the temple security, who was in charge of the law and order. Uh, maintaining law and order, a very powerful person. 
We need to know about the Sadducees. Sadducees were chief priests, the priests and the high priests, very wealthy and arist they were aristocrats, highly influential. They were not popular with the common people. They believed only in the first five books and they did not believe in resurrection. About the Sanhedrin, Sanhedrin is, a, is the Supreme Court of the Jews. It consists of 71 people. That one person is the chief priest. Other than that, 24 Sadducees, 24 elders and 22 scribes. Then we saw about the elders and uh, about the scribes. Then we saw about Annas. Annas was the chief priest. He was a Sadducee. Then we saw about Caiaphas. Caiaphas, again, a chief priest, a Sadducee, the son-in-law of Annas. And then John and Alexander. So these were, we don't know much about them, but they were influential people. Let's come to the verse for the day. The verse to meditate today as we all retire. Acts chapter 4, verse 4. If you read this verse carefully, it says, But many who heard the message believed. I am concerned with the first part of the verse that is relevant to us today. But many who heard the message believed. Sometimes, we like to hear for our, because it gives us some kind of a comfort. It is, we like to hear it, the word of God as something that is an obligation. We should do it. We should, uh, if we don't do it, it becomes, uh, uh, we, we are not doing the right thing. But can we be people who hear the message of God and believe. So many times we have doubts in our minds, we have doubts in our hearts. We wonder how this is, how true this is, how true that is. That is why yesterday we saw it is only through faith that we can come to God. And today, I want you to move one step forward. When you hear the message of God, don't just retain it in your brain. But let it sink in, let it sink into your heart. Believe the things that we hear. So as we retire today, let's keep this verse. But many who heard the message believed. So the number of men who believed grew to about 5,000. Let us pray that you and I will be one among those who believed.